The chances for a new tropical cyclone out in the Atlantic are on the rise while an incredibly rare air mass is set to enter the lower 48 to kick off the first month of autumn. Welcome in folks on this last day of August. We're about to turn the page on summer and open the door to fall and fall has already fallen across much of the lower 48, particularly east of the Rockies. We're going to take a look at just how much fall we can expect and for how long it will stick around. But right now we're going to start with the tropics where the chances of tropical cyclone formation way out in the Atlantic are certainly on the rise. We're going to take a look at that right now in our tropical update. Welcome into the channel, everyone. I hope you're having a wonderful and safe Labor Day weekend. I'm glad you're here with me. Jason is my name. Been tracking weather for over 40 years. I've looked at all the data this morning, and I can honestly say this is one of the weirdest August and start of September I have ever seen. Fall has just taken hold early. Summer has left the building. Severe weather season has virtually shut down. The tropics have been out of order as we've gotten deeper into hurricane season. As we approach the peak, there are some signs that things will pick up a little bit. How big, how much, and how many uh, tropical cyclones to expect still up in the air. But uh, right now we've got a 30% chance of development in this yellow area as designated by the National Hurricane Center. They're watching a wave move off the coast of Africa, and we're going to take a look at that. But nothing else is going on. But a 30% chance of development in that little uh, yellow area in the next seven days, folks. I'm giving it a little bit of a higher chance than that because I think that conditions are going to be favorable for it. We'll see that uh, upgraded over time is my prediction. But here's that wave. Look at it coming off the coast of Africa here. Looks pretty moist. Some pulse convection, so we've got some higher cloud tops here. That's a signal of a pretty strong wave. Here's a signal of a pretty weak wave. Nothing much going on here in the central Atlantic. And then you've got a couple of waves moving one, moving off the coast of South America, one moving off the west coast of Central America. Squally weather in through here along this frontal boundary that extends up off the well offshore and a little low pressure getting its act together off the southeast coast that's going to not really bother anybody except the maybe the southern sections of the Avalon Peninsula. But that's what you've got out here today. Now we're going to watch that. Uh, we're going to go here to the GFS. We're going to watch the uh, little wave here move through the uh, basically this, the southern part of the Atlantic. There it is down here. You see that? So we get on out into Wednesday and into Thursday, and uh, the GFS starts to develop it pretty quickly, get it into a tropical storm status, eventually hurricane status, and curve it quickly on up into the Atlantic as we get way on into next week. And by two weeks, we're looking at it zooming back into the North Atlantic up toward Iceland, folks. That's what's going on on the GFS. Nothing else really to speak of except another wave here just east of Bermuda. If you take a look here at the European model and see what it's showing, we're going to get on the 0Z zero zero run and take a look. So it waits until next Friday to really start to develop this thing out here in the central Atlantic. There it goes. And again, it approaches the islands, but then curves it back. It's a little more threatening to Bermuda, but it curves it just east of Bermuda as a fairly strong hurricane. But uh, again, it's going to curve it back. Why is that happening? Well, we've got a break in the pattern, which I'll show you here in a second. Here's the European ensemble the suite of ensemble members and all these L's out of 51 members are the L's that are, are the ensemble members that actually develop something out here and some of them develop a storm a couple of them develop a hurricane most keep it pretty weak but uh, you can see kind of a split in the track many of them the majority actually to uh, run the system over or north of this pink line and a few take them a little bit farther south. This will be a little more threatening to the northern islands around St. John and Puerto Rico, and the DR, and potentially the Bahamas and the southeastern United States, but the majority keep them north of this pink line, and if that happens, it's going to be very difficult for the system to make it all the way into the United States. Outside of that, not much going on. Here's the GFS ensembles, and you can see this looks like a shotgun. Somebody just shot a shotgun at the screen. L's all over the place. They develop it at different times, but they most of them do develop it, but uh, most of them keep it fairly far to the north. Only a couple track it south, so that's good news. Still something to watch as we approach this peak season. we got to keep our eyes on all these waves that move out in the Atlantic, but seeing a lot of dry air out here, a lot of wind shear is still. That may back off as we get over time, and the background state... Uh, 
been a lot of rising or, or sinking air throughout the uh, hurricane season so far. The MGO is kind of spinning in the circle of death. It's not really providing a lot of support right now, nor does it look to, but there are some indications that we could get a little bit more rising air in the background, and that would certainly help some of these waves not get squashed as they traverse the Atlantic. But in the meantime, the European ensembles give this about a 60 to 70 percent chance of development. I think that's probably about right. I could see this developing over the next week or so. Outside of that, just a little bit of home grown potential, nothing else really to speak of. Here's the pattern as we go on out in time. You've got a big ridge out here and a big trough along the east coast. Anything, we've talked about this, but when you've got a big trough like this along the east coast, anything that comes in here is just going to get shunted back out to sea like that. You've got to get something into the Caribbean, into the Gulf, and take the low road, and no models are really doing any of that. But if you do that, you start to see something develop close to home, it could sneak under that trough. The other thing is, their option is the trough goes away and gets replaced by a ridge and that really doesn't look all that likely at least in a robust kind of a fashion as we go and way out in time next wednesday thursday friday saturday now we've got a big ridge in the atlantic but we've still got this trough along the east coast look at that the kind of the lines kink there if we got way on out here now if we saw a hurricane or something in the bahamas here that could threaten parts of north carolina um, unfortunately for tropical fans, that doesn't look very likely at this point to have something that low. But as we go way on out and a two week period, you know, kind of got this westerly flow here off of the United States, the ridge here it breaks. And so GFS kind of agrees with this too. There's an escape route out here. So not really concerned about anything hitting the United States over the next 10 days to two weeks. That said, it's the tropics and weather models change and weather patterns change quickly sometimes. And so we'll watch the, everything that happens. I'll keep you informed. No need to take any action right now, but that's what's going on out in the tropics. Now we got to look at that rare air mass coming in. And we had a big sort of a solar flare CME combo. And we're going to look at that too and see what that means for geomagnetic conditions. But I've got your weather IQ coming up right now. All right, here's today's weather IQ question. Let's see if you know the answer to this. We're going to deal with this some as we get on into winter. What phenomenon causes the halo around the sun or moon? Ice crystals and cirrostratus clouds, dust storms, pollutants in the atmosphere, or sunspots? If you know the answer, type it in the comments. If you don't, hang out till the end of the show, and I'll let you know what the answer is. In the meantime, let's go ahead and take a look and see what your weekend, the rest of your Labor Day weekend has in store, and maybe even into next week, too. We've got a cool air mass coming in. We're going to take a look at who's going to be affected by that right now. Folks, if you haven't yet subscribed, please consider hitting the subscribe button, like the content, leave a comment. If there's anything I can pray over, put it in the comment section. Let me know, and I'll be happy to do that. Pray for you guys every single day. Pray for this channel. Please pray for the channel. Pray for me as well and my family, but uh, really appreciate all the support. Like the video, subscribe, and all that stuff that helps YouTube push it out to a wider audience and certainly helps us grow. So I really appreciate all of uh, the support you've given me over the past several months as we've gotten into this thing together. So let's grow it together. And if you have any questions, anything uh, along those lines, happy to answer any of those things. I'll read all the comments and we'll respond to each one. In the meantime, here's satellite view. And you can tell if you're at the beach this weekend, you're seeing a lot of cloud cover, except maybe over here on the east coast of Florida in spots. And up here in the northeast, looking pretty good. But along the Gulf Coast, very, very cloudy. And and rain around as well and plenty of clouds up through the nation's midsection even a little secondary push uh, of a uh, cooler air out of Canada is coming in here and there's a little boundary there associated with those clouds you can see from the mid-Atlantic down here into the mid-south and some uh, fog around was around earlier up here in the Midwest cloudy up here with another little system in the northwest and down here in the desert southwest got some clouds rolling in too plenty of rain around rain showers around from uh, just north of Rapid City through Pierre in here into uh, Lincoln Nebraska places like that near Tulsa and down here uh, in Waco Texas Texas over here in Missouri as well, back uh, toward um, Roswell and places uh, like that. Seeing some rain this morning along and off the Gulf Coast, down here on the west coast of Florida, seeing some rain as well. Everybody else looking pretty good. Showery weather up here near Seattle, north of Spokane, so it's cloudy and showery up there, but everybody else looking pretty good this morning. Taking a look here as we go on out uh, through today, we've got some flood watches that we're, uh, we, we have in place here in Texas where it's been raining quite a bit and we're going to see a few more spots of heavy rain this afternoon with heavy showers and thunderstorms kind of still warm here in the west where you're under a ridge you're going to see temperatures in the 90s so some heat advisories in southern california and also up into the interior sections of washington state near spokane going to see temperatures soaring into the 90s and some dense fog this morning up in the midwest everybody else looking good there's your boundary surface map 
show you this. There's an installed boundary with little waves of low pressure moving along this boundary, bringing heavy rain in here to Texas. Got another little wave working through the Midwest and a boundary back up in here with a return flow of moisture. That's where we're seeing plenty of uh, clouds and some showers occasionally too. And then back here in the southern Appalachians, got a little wave working through, a little trough kind of swinging through and uh, focusing uh, showers and thunderstorms this afternoon along the higher terrain that'll push into the foothills before dying out. High pressure up in control in the northwest uh, the, or the western section of the country and in the Ohio Valley in the northeast as well. Now here's our precipitable water map. If we take a look at this, you can kind of see where the boundary is with the dry air. A lot of moisture out here last week. Well, that's given way to dry air. Plenty of moisture returning back up in here to the plains and in a push of dry air out of Canada into the mid-south all the way down into the southeast. As we go out, out in the next couple of days, you can kind of see it doesn't make a whole lot of progress. We get some wedging down east of the apse. That's what that signature is there with the drier air, the kind of the browns and blues moving in. Plenty of green still here in the middle of the country in the nation's midsection and across the Gulf Coast states into Florida. That's where we'll find the bulk of the rain. Another batch of moisture moving in with a, another cool shot of air coming in out of Canada. This is going to be very, very cool. And you can see that slamming in to the northern borders. We go on out into Thursday and eventually into Friday, folks. And then moisture surge out ahead of that will probably lead to some clouds and occasional showers along the deep south and the southeast as we go through the week. Here's your radar for this afternoon. Let's go through the day on Sunday, just some scattered showers in the plains, heavier rain and uh, potentially some thunderstorms this afternoon in Texas firing up back into Mexico or New Mexico as well here, the front range of the um, I was going to say the Rockies, but this isn't the Rockies. This is Southern Appalachian, so it's going to you're going to see showers move off the higher terrain here into the foothills, and of course Florida, where you've got a stalled frontal boundary. You see plenty of showers down there as well. Things will kind of diminish overnight, except here in Nebraska, Iowa, northern Minnesota could see some showers hang together through the overnight hours. That will eventually dissipate as we get on into tomorrow. Same areas kind of fire back up again as that energy moves out of Canada, though moisture out ahead of that. Going to see showers pop off here in the Midwest and around the UP of Michigan, all the way back through the Central Plains again, through the Missouri Valley, back into Lower Texas and the Red River Valley, and across Florida again in the Mid South. See some showers. Northeast looking pretty good, except for that little low pressure that I mentioned earlier. Going to clip potentially Maine, Nova Scotia, bring some rain up that way, and. Um, there you go. It's good. This model has it actually moving in. I'm not sure it's going to do that. This is the short-term model, so we'll see, but uh, we'll keep our eyes on that. Could see some beneficial rains if it does for you guys up there in Maine. Here is the temperature anomaly a mile off the ground. Gives you a good proxy for what's going to happen here. European model has plenty of cool air around as we get on in toward Tuesday into Wednesday. And uh, here, let's do this. So let's, let's look at the whole entire nation here. But look what's happening out here in the West got that ridge in order to get a big big trough coming in like this big upper level low you got to have a big ridge out west that means hot weather for you this time of year but look what's happening in the northern plains in the midwest purples showing up this is going to be highs in the 50s folks lows down into the 30s could see some patchy frosting spots depending on just the magnitude of this thing but it gets all the way down to the central plains clips the mid south and south upper southeast and uh, diminishes in intensity as it gets over into New England in terms of the anomalies. And uh, But you're going to see plenty of cool air associated with this for much of the nation. We're going to be below normal. The bigger magnitude of below normal is up here where we're going to see highs in the 50s and uh, 60s as we get uh, on end toward mid and late week with highs in the 80s and 70s everywhere else uh, down toward the south except for the southern tier where it's going to be highs in the hundreds down in South Texas and the desert southwest, even approaching 100 up in the northwest as well. Precipitation over the next few days. We get on a Tuesday, Wednesday. There comes that system with rain in the Midwest and some showery weather with a couple of little upper level systems moving through the southeast. Florida is where the lion's share of the rain is going to fall. And as we get on in toward Thursday and Friday, could see some strong thunderstorms move through ahead of that secondary push of autumn air as we get late into the week, into the weekend, setting us up for a very nice weekend along much of the east coast. Look at this big high pressure sitting right smack dab in the middle of the country, sending in those northeasterly winds and northerly winds. We're going to see drier air and cooler weather as we move into the weekend next weekend. So going to be a nice weekend. Precipitation over the next five, six days. There's your precipitation footprint here in the central portion of the country up to the Midwest like this, and then up and down the um, basically the mid-south and the Cumberland Plateau up here into the interior sections of the northeast and across Florida. 
and Texas. These are the areas that we're going to see above normal precipitation, everybody else below or near normal. And that's what's going on over the course of the next several days, folks. We'll get into more, a little more detail on the pattern uh, as we take a look at tomorrow's, as we get into tomorrow's forecast when I have that video out. But uh, right now we got to look at the, the space weather. We had a solar flare and we're going to see what that implications that has in store for us right now. Yeah, folks, over the next couple of days, geomagnetic storm conditions are possible. In fact, we could get all the way up to strong G3 geomagnetic storm conditions. Why is that? Well, if we take a look at our chronograph here, look at this. You see that CME pop off of there? Well, a sunspot, long duration sunspot, actually shot off from the sun and um, from one of those ones that we've been watching over the last couple of days. You can see it here, it kind of spikes up, is an M-class solar flare, and then it took a while to kind of come down. A CME came off of that. So we're going to see some colors here on our KP index pretty soon. There's your disc, and that's the one, 4199. Doesn't look all that impressive, but it shot an M-class flare off, a CME was ejected because of the duration of the flare, and now that's headed toward Earth, directly toward Earth. As a matter of fact, it was Earth-facing. And so what does that mean? Well, that means we could see an aurora. I'm not sure what happened to this image over there. There it goes, we'll refresh and pop it in. But look at this, we could see the aurora view line as we get on in toward early and midweek, we could see the aurora view line pushed fairly far south here into the US high chance of aurora as the um, CME interacts with the magnetic field. So we'll keep our eyes on that for tomorrow and the next day. And there's Google. In the meantime, earthquakes, there's a 4.2 in the Gulf of California, nothing else going on, but we're gonna watch volcano and earthquake activity and see if we get any sort of sympathetic activity as geological activity as uh, that CME approaches and interacts with the magnetic field of the earth. But uh, that's the show for today, folks. Going to get you out of here now, but we're going to answer that weather IQ question. You may have know this because you've probably paid attention to this if you're a winter weather lover. But uh, here's the question. What phenomenon causes the halo around the sun or the moon? Ice crystals, dust storms, pollutants, or sunspots? And the answer, of course, is ice crystals. Cirrostratus clouds are made up of ice crystals, and you get uh, you, you get a layer of ice crystal clouds up here, and the moon, you know, the certain brightness of the moon, it'll refract, and you get that nice halo around. It's very, very beautiful. You see that in the uh, wintertime a lot. Folklore says that precedes snow, and the reason for that is because when you have that type of cloud working in, it generally precedes a storm system. System. And oftentimes in the wintertime, depending on where you are, those storm systems could be snow. Summertime, you get a halo around the sun. You could have that in the wintertime too, I suppose. Uh, you actually could. But um, you see it a lot more with halos around the moon. Anyway, folks, that's it. That is the show for today. I hope you have a wonderful day. We'll be back tomorrow with your Monday Labor Day edition of Cold Rain's Weather World. In the meantime, have a nice day. We'll talk to you soon.